segment two, Northtown Neighborhood News Magazine. Thanks, Sonny Hirsch. Tell your producer, website, ntnm.org. Over 50,000 shows watched, and somebody you have watched and watched and seemed to like, because we keep inviting them back because you keep asking, is the hospice chaplain of the Jewish Care Service of the Midwest Palliative and Hospice Care Center. I'm actually reading. Uh, Rabbi Pinchas Eisenbach. How are you, Rabbi? Thank you. So tell us a little bit. Now, this is the only Jewish-type um, facility of its kind. Correct. In the Midwest. And why don't you tell us something about it? Yes. We, as three rabbis, were, we worked together as a team for the Jewish services in Chicago, the suburbs, Skokie, Northbrook, Libertyville. And the reason we have a Jewish hospice is, for example, we have three denominations. We have Orthodox, Conservative, Reform, and we have people who are, they might say they're agnostic, but inside they still have this park. The last minute they say they don't want a rabbi, they're not religious. And the last minute they'll tell me, if you go to the synagogue, you know, don't forget, here's my Jewish name, make me a Mishiberach, <laughs> which means make me a prayer. And I said, of course. And you never know whom you're going to touch. Because, for example, when you look at the Catholic side of viewpoint, they want their own priest because we talk the same language. And we understand them. And especially when someone is sick at the last m days or the last hours, they have something to share to you, with you and something to reminisce that we can help each other. And that's very important to schmooze. If there's any halachically, for example, I just had a case where a 95-year-old lady, one son was religious, one son was not, and the other daughter was completely, didn't believe in anything. And the mother is in the nursing home, and the nursing home asked the family to make a DNA, which means do not resuscitate. So the family said, look, let's check what mom has signed, you know. She did have a DNA signed 20 years ago. So one son said, okay, if this is mother's wishes, you know. Yeah. And I just listened because my policy is when there's three conflicts, it's better to listen. And in Hebrew it's called Sheval Tase. Just listen and try to help him and read in between the lines. So the other son said, I have to call my rabbi. And my rabbi said no, because when I called him, he said no. And that, the other daughter said, well, what's the difference, you know? So I saw they were all out and, and cannot come to conclusions. I said, you know, maybe we'll meet next week. But before we meet next week, do yourself and me a favor. Let's invite the doctor to examine your mom to see what the prognosis is really is. It's always good to have a second opinion. And we'll go from there. And then we'll decide what to do about the DNR. They agreed. They said, I think it's a fabulous idea. We'll see what the doctor says, you know. So the doctor came, examined his mom, and we came to an office. We talked together. And the doctor says, you know, you have two options. If your mom does not, you don't accept your mom's DNR, then if she goes to the hospital, she might die immediately because she's so fragile. She's only not even 100 pounds. She won't make it. And say if she does make it, you know, miracles can happen. You know, I'm going, telling you two viewpoints. She might end up in a ventilator. What would you like to do? And they asked me, what do you think I sh we should do? I said, so since you have your rabbi, I think it's important. You tell your rabbi what the doctor said, and your rabbi can call me. Or if you, or you talk to the rabbi, I will talk to him. Either way, but I think you, you exchange thoughts and, and, and sleep on it. So the family looked at me. I'm not giving him an answer. I said, you'll see, things will work out. Wait a few days. Well, I was wrong. It didn't take two hours. The family called me. Rabbi, I want to see you right away. The rabbi said, now it's okay, DNR. So the father tells me, I, and the sister, I don't understand. Before it was not kosher. It, they said, I cannot, and now it's okay. I said, you have to understand that when it comes in medical, Jewish halacha, Jewish law, that you have to have some experience. It's not only the Jewish law. Jewish law also brings in the doctors to understand, comprehend the medical and the Jewish law have to coincide. But I didn't want to tell him the rabbi did not have experience in working, exp uh, 
in hospitals or what the prognosis is because everyone can say, you know, it's not kosher, it's not good enough. But what my experience was that I thought the same thing as the rabbi 15 years ago before I started out, that, well, everything has to be that way. And I found out, no, you need patience. You have to listen and also understand what's going on before you enter. Because it's, there's not one way. There's many ways and many interpretations, and I'm not reinterpreting. I'm interpreting the situation, and each case is different. And the family was very happy, and it worked out. And finally, the son asked me, you know, when do you think my mom is going to die? Is it before you and keep her? And we're not going to do about Shiva. So I asked him, did anyone else die at this time? He says, yeah, my father died a day before you and keep her. I said, it can happen. I'm not a prophet, but we got to wrap this up. So. so what happened by the end? The mother died right uh, this, uh, half a day before Yom Kippur, the day before Yom Kippur, and the funeral was right the next day, and they did not have to see Shiva. They said, you know, we said enough. We just said only an hour, which is good enough, to show you how important when you have Jewish husband to understand we can work with any rabbi, but there are ways to do it. Thank you very much, Rabbi Pinchas Eisenbach. If people would like to call... It's the Midwest Hosp Palliative and Hospice Care Center. Um, phone number is 847-467-7423. Thanks, Sonny Hirsch. Bye, everybody. Thank you.